Hi guys, welcome to DNA replication. So in terms of the uh, specification, you need to know the semi-conservative replication of DNA. We will be looking at the process of uh, 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 DNA replication as follows on here, including the important uh, enzymes. So we will be looking at the DNA helicase that uh, breaks hydrogen bonds. And we will be looking at uh, DNA polymerase that forms the phosphodiester bond. So in terms of the um, processes of the uh, division, the cells that make up organisms are always delivered from existing cells by the process of division, which then is divided uh, uh, into nuclear division and cytokinesis, so the division of the cytoplasm. So this process, okay, is the process by which the nucleus will divide, okay, so the nuclear division. And there are two types of the nuclear division, there is mitosis and meiosis. And it uh, follows nuclear division and uh, is the process by which the whole uh, cell will divide. But before the uh, mitosis uh, can take place or meiosis, the DNA has to be replicated. So uh, this is to make sure that all of the daughter cells have the genetic information to produce, for example, enzymes, because all enzymes are proteins that are needed uh, for the reactions. So the process of DNA replication is very specific because all of the new cells are more or less genetically identical to the original one in terms of the mitosis, of course. So, uh, process of the um, semi-conservative replication has four main requirements. What are they? So, first of those, there are four types of the nucleotides. So, it's the guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. So we need those uh, nucleotides with those different uh, bases. Both strands, that's really important because for some reason students thinking it's just one, nonsense. Both strands, okay, act as a template. So those strands are going to unwind and act as a template. So the free nucleotides from the cytoplasm can attach. We need the DNA polymerase enzyme, which will make the phosphodiester bond, and DNA helicase, which will break the hydrogen bonds. And we also need the source of chemical energy to drive the process. So, uh, how does it then take place? Enzymes, first thing first. Helicase unwinds the DNA. So, as you can see here, this is where the enzyme helicase is going to start working, so it's going to unwind DNA, okay? What we were learning before, it's the fact about 5' prime and 3', prime. remember when the nucleotides are attached, so the new nucleotides are going to attach. The enzyme that's going to drive this uh, reaction here, it's the DNA polymerase, so it will join the new nucleotides and form the phosphodiester bond, the sugar uh, phosphate backbone. So, how does it work? So here we've got a uh, DNA, okay, which is double helix. The enzyme DNA helicase is going to come along here and unzip double helix DNA by breaking hydrogen bonds. So then new uh, nucleotides, free nucleotides from the cytoplasm are going to attach to those strands. Remember, each of those old strands, so let's call it old here, okay, old, old, will act as a template. And the new strand going to be made on each of, to, to, to each of those by the complementary base pairs. So remember, guanine always binds with cytosine, and adenine with thymine. This addition will be then of the nucleotides catalyzed by DNA polymerase, which makes the phosphodiester bond the sugar phosphate backbone. At the end, so remember that was our old, that was our old strand, now those are our new strands. 
So at the end of a DNA replication, you are going to get two strands, okay? And each of them will contain one of the old DNA strand and one new strand. So you can make a note on this now. And remember, key points, okay? Double helix, DNA helicase to break the hydrogen bonds, okay? DNA helicase acts so both of those strands will act as the template three nucleotides are going to attach. Uh, DNA polymerase is involved here, okay, to make the phosphodye as the bond to make up. And at the end, we're going to get two strands identical, two identical strands, and each of them will have half of the originals, one of the original strands and one of the new strands. So describe how DNA is replicated. Again, keywords coming up, okay? Strands separated by breaking hydrogen bonds by DNA helicase. Both strands act as a template. Three nucleotides will attach. Complementary base per so adenine and thymine, gu uh, guanine and cytosine. DNA polymerase joins them by reforming uh, the um, phosphodiester bonds. Obviously, hydrogen bonds will be reformed as well, but that's the main job of DNA polymerase is to reform phosphodiester bonds. And the whole process is called semi-conservative replication because the new strands are made of one of the old strands, okay, uh, sorry, and then the other uh, new strands. So you need to be able to evaluate the experiment which was done to provide the evidence for semi-conservative replication to prove that those strands contain one of the old uh, DNA and the new strand of the DNA. So how was it done? It was done by using the isotopes N14 and N15. Uh, and the difference between those isotopes is the density. So N15, okay, there are more dense. N14, there are less dense. So how was it done? Uh, there was a mixture of the parental DNA uh, made uh, of one of those um, one of those isotopes with the other one. So uh, the DNA uh, bases here, okay, were uh, started with the parental DNA, which was made only of N15, okay. That was made at N14. And they've mixed them. So obviously half of them, mixture of those, it's going to be in the middle of your beaker because first generation contains half of it and half of that. Okay. But then when you replicate this again, so look, you imagine you're using that one to uh, to do a strand. So do you obviously the same nucleotides will be used, but then if you've got only blue, okay, then you're going to come back to this point. So the past paper questions could look like this, and they could ask you to tick, okay, whether in which sample you're going to have this situation. So the ticks we're going to have as follow here, and let's just have a look why. So N15, they told you that there are heavy forms of the N15, so N15 is going to be right at the bottom, they even told you that. Here they had N14, okay. Right, but it's a semi-conservative replication. So if we've used that, we're going to have both of those, okay, which will continue to here. And then the, there were two cell divisions, okay, containing N14. So obviously that's what our final strand will be like, okay. And it was it wasn't that heavy, so the band will be present here on the top. So that's a really typical question that you you might be asked to answer. So which part of DNA molecule contains nitrogen? Of course, the base. And explain why DNA from generation one is found in the position shown. Semi-conservative replication. Okay, half of the strand will be the old one of the 15, and the other one will be 14. Hence, in the middle on that. 
and complete the diagram showing the results in generation 2 exactly the same as before. So you've got a band here.